Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are quite obviously behind the scenes. We are going to be hanging out with our ostriches. If you saw our teaser post yesterday afternoon or you joined us live yesterday morning, you already knew what to expect. We are hanging out with our largest birds. These birds are massive. And we are joined not only by our three female ostriches, but also by our senior keeper over here in our farm zebra ostrich area of sorts. We're joined by Jessica. I'm going to go ahead and turn around the camera. You've met her before, but let's go ahead and say a big good morning, Jessica. Nice to see you. Good morning. Now we've hung out with Jessica before with box turtles, with the pigs, goat, farmyard. We've done a lot of features. Goodness, there's been a whole lot of Z-learning fun. But this morning, Jessica, we are with the three ostriches. Let's go ahead and kind of get a little closer of a look. They were extra interested in <laughs> the camera and the microphone. So hopefully they won't do too much pecking at it. We'll see. But Jessica, can you introduce us to these three lovely ladies? So this one right up front is Phoebe and she is um, our dominant female. <laughs> Quite obviously. <laughs> and she loves to dance for us and um, display. So she'll have her wings out and flop around and that's kind of her little dance. And then behind her in the middle there is Gabby, Gabrielle, and they are both eight years old. And then way in the back there is Zena, and she is over 20 years old. Whoa, so there's quite a range in age then. So you said from eight years old to 20 years old. Oh gosh, you can see all that dominance too. Yep. Since they live in a social group, it's kind of a little bit of a, let's say a pecking order. No pun intended with our ostriches. But right now they're hanging out behind the scenes. This of course isn't where they spend all their time. In fact, right now, this is just kind of a temporary pause as we prep the area and try not to get our equipment too packed out. But Jessica actually just snuck over here. We're going to shift our ostriches out onto habitat. The two zebra brothers are already out on habitat. So we're gonna let the ostriches zoom through. We're joining them so it's a little different than they're typically used to. But of course, we're gonna wait on ostrich time Good girl, Zena. Here comes Zena. She's poking her head around the corner. She's wondering what this weird guy is doing over here. She's used to Jessica. Here, I'll kind of step back a little bit more, give her a little bit more personal space. I'm gonna grab some snacks. So Jessica is gonna sneak over. She got a couple of different extra special snacks for our ostriches. Now, those of you who are wondering about that pecking, don't worry. All that snoot booping that they are doing, it is not meant to be aggressive. It's a very curious behavior of ostriches. <laughs> I just did it to the camera one more time. They see some kind of short, shiny objects. There's very curious animals. They wanna test out to see if something's edible. Kind of like the soybeans. Okay, so who do we have here, Jessica? This is Zena. So we have Zena right now in kind of our shoot area. Now I know we talked about that specifically when we were with our zebras. We got a really up close view with our zebras. Tell us kind of what is a shoot used for? So it kind of restrains the animals a little more voluntarily where they can still make the choice to come in. Sure. And then we can get an up close look and make sure they're doing okay. Look to see if they have any blood feathers. Look to see, um, you know, if they have any wounds. And then yeah. we can also train our ostriches to get blood from here under their wings. Yeah, I'll kind of come sneak in. Me. Sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and kind of so sneak under. A lot of Whoa. Right Take here. a look at that view. Usually the vet's like this one, like right around here. That is so interesting. Okay, so you can tell that she's comfortable. She's hanging out. She's not wiggling all around. This is a normal thing that y'all do on a regular basis to practice with them. So you can see that big, huge leg muscle. And then Jessica's actually holding up that entire wing. So notice you all already are super savvy on animal facts. You know that ostriches don't fly. And you can definitely tell because there's not a whole lot of muscle under there. <laughs> So there's not a ton of power, but a lot of different veins. Take a look at all those feathers too. How fascinating. Thanks for showing us that, Jessica. Yeah, and we'll do injections in her thigh there too. So you can do different injections, whether it's for routine or maybe for extra special care. But then that's something that they have to go through on a daily basis. This chute connects to their kind of behind the scenes bedroom area and then out onto the habitat where our ostriches are hanging out right now. And then our zebras are much further out in the area. So this is a part of that normal routine. I love that you just showed that to us. Well, let's see if somebody else is interested in some soybeans this morning. <laughs> so 
So who's our third individual that's sneaking through? Gabby. Gabby's heading through right now. And we're gonna go ahead and kind of shift her out. So we have all three of our ostriches hanging out over here in Habitat. Now, I will be honest, I got my hands full. I'm trying to make sure that no one's eating any cords or snatching away any microphones. Because <laughs> if there's an animal in the zoo that would be able to do it, it would definitely be the ostriches. Okay, so you had soybeans. We fed them that last time too. We know that's one of their favorite snacks, but it looks like carrots. Yep. So chopped up carrots, bite-sized, that way the ostriches can easily eat them. And we'll kind of disperse them all throughout the habitat so that way they can go and forage for them. Like I said, the zebras are already out there kind of heading around. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see all of you. We got so busy, I didn't even get a chance to say good morning to all of our regulars. Um, I also have to give a shout out. Hi, mom and dad. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Nice to see you. <laughs> We're getting a nice up close view of our ostriches behind the scenes right now. And Jessica actually just snuck over here to our hose to go ahead and see if any of our ostriches are interested in a bath this morning. I know I mentioned that live yesterday that our ostriches actually really do like to play in the hose water. They like to get sprayed down. Now, Jessica, this is more for fun, would you say? Or is it a regular thing that you have to clean the ostriches? It's not really for cleaning. It's more for um, keeping them cool. So after they get their little water bath, they'll usually go and do a dust bath and that sure. will keep them um, insulated and not be um, so hot. Absolutely. And so, it helps clean their feathers too. Ooh, right, you gotta kind of clean out those feathers. But if you imagine, the African savanna, of course, the grasslands where they're natively found out in the wild. They don't have keepers that are spraying them down to clean off all those feathers. They don't mind getting wet, but dust baths are going to be their preferred mode of kind of cleaning those feathers, taking care of them, and then preening them, of course. Those of you who are asking about the zebras, hopefully you can see them in the background. They're hanging out way back there. We can kind of zoom in a little bit. You can see the two boys, Gus and Forrest, hanging out there. But right now, we're gonna see if our ostriches are interested at all in having a bath. Now, right now, our temperature's probably mid-70s. It's a little, I would say, nice and shady back here, so not super hot. But during the summer months, is this almost a daily thing that you would do with the ostriches? Yeah, pretty much. And we also have a little mister that will fit on the end. And uh, so we can just set it up all day. We have sprinklers that we'll put out. So a lot of different ways to get them some water. Sometimes we'll just pour a bucket of water and make a little um, wallow out on the yard in the middle. You can see Gabby back there. <laughs> oh yeah, she's dust bathing right now. Let's go ahead and see if we can kind of zoom in. That's, I'm glad you pointed that out, Jessica, that's perfect. So she just went ahead and laid down. If you can imagine an ostrich that big, an eight foot tall animal laying down on the ground and then she's kind of flopping her wings side to side to try to get all that dust all over her body. Tail. Look at that tail wagon. <laughs> so ostriches max out at about eight feet tall. They weigh well over about 300 pounds. They're a very, very big bird. Oh, let's see. Zena. Zena's kind of poking around in the background. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. So that way you can see a little bit more of what we're seeing here. Zena's kind of moseying away from us. Oh, Courtney, since you asked, we actually have three ostriches here at Riverbank. So we have three females, Gabby, Phoebe, and Xena. But it looks like they're kind of moseying their way out into the habitat to go on and explore. Now, Jessica already prepped everything. We have somebody that's marching back already. Phoebe took Gabby's spot. Ah. And now she's dust bathing. And then Gabby's going to come back for another bath, probably. That is hilarious. So that must be the preferred dust bathing spot here in the ostrich and zebra habitat. Maddie, I saw your question about what are their mouths like? Well, they are a big, big bird, which means that they have kind of a beak or a bill. Um, so that means no teeth inside of those mouths. So when we were getting kind of pecked or when they were kind of exploring their environment or eating when Jessica was hand feeding them, it wasn't that she was getting bit, they just kind of scoop it up with those big, big bills that they have. So if you couldn't tell, everything is quite large on an ostrich. <laughs> oh, Molly, age six. Oh, we're gonna really get into the bath now. Oh, go for it. I love it. Oh, we're laying down. <laughs> here, let's get a, a better view down here. Look at that, that is perfect. So all of you that were wondering, what does an ostrich bath look like? 
this is what an ostrich bass looks like and you are seeing it right here at Riverbanks. How much fun is this? <laughs> we were getting really into it. I love it. See those big old feet? <laughs> so she parked her big feet right next to herself. She's kind of laying on top of them, flopping back and forth, getting it all over her wings. How much fun. Okay, Molly, I got to go back to your question though because it was such a great one. Molly, you were wondering, do they actually put their heads underground like you see in the movies or in cartoons? They do not. That is a complete myth. It's not true whatsoever. I'm glad you asked because if you check out our caption this morning, it's all about misconceptions in the animal world and maybe some different myths that you know about some of your other favorite animals. So great prompt, Molly. I really appreciate it. Check out our caption today. So that way you can do your Z learning activity after bath time is all finished. <laughs> Look at this. We got some really wet ostriches hanging out with us right now, Jessica. This is awesome. <laughs> Phoebe's checking it out. She wants to get in on that. <laughs> Haley, age 10, you were wondering, how do you tell if they're a boy or a girl? Well, we have all females here at Riverbank, so it's, I can't really give you a side-by-side -side comparison. But female ostriches have a lot more gray or tan feathers. Um, they're a little bit more one color. Oh, we got two laying down ostriches. I need to switch my spot real quick. Here, let me go ahead back up. I want to go ahead and snag some of these feathers though real quick since you were asking about them, Haley. Here, there's a much better view now of our ostriches as they bathe. So if you check out these feathers that I'm showing right here in front of the camera, you notice that they're a little bit grayer, kind of a uh, slate kind of color. These are female ostrich feathers. Males are going to be much darker black with very white plumage as well. So males and females have very different looking feathers. Let's see if we can get a better view. <laughs> Y'all, all of these questions are so great. I'm trying to enjoy the bath time with these ostriches. I don't want to get hosed off necessarily this morning. <laughs> But I am just cracking up. This is one of my favorite things to do here at Riverbanks. It's a very special behind the scenes exclusive for all of you to join us for Z learning. Jessica, I love your question about what other birds ostriches are related to. Now ostriches are the largest birds in the world, but they do have close relatives. They are a part of the ratite family. That's a very big new word. Oh, we are zooming out of here. We're going back to that dust bath. <laughs> Who are we still joined by? Who's still hanging out with Gabby. us? This is Gabby who's still sitting with us. Jeez Louise. So Jessica, they do have some close relatives within that ratite family. Um, some of them being rias, cassowaries, and then emus as well. So they kind of range all around the globe uniquely enough, but ostriches are by far the largest in that family. Oh, bash, age seven. Are they adult size? Yep, these are full grown adult females. Um, maximum size height-wise for an ostrich, which typically means males are a bit bigger, is about eight feet tall and well over 300 pounds. So, shoo, they're a big, big bird. Something cool that I just learned about ostriches is that when they are born, they grow up to 11 inches a month for the first year. Whoa, okay. So, so by when they... the time they're a year, they're full size. That is crazy. Okay, so... Or 18 months. Think about when we have all these different zoo babies that we've had recently at Riverbanks, you think of the lion cubs or the gorilla infants and how differently they all grow. For example, the gorilla infants that we're going to hang out with tomorrow are still pretty small, but Jessica, you're telling us that in 18 months, an ostrich would be pretty much full grown, full adult size. That is amazing to think of. Well, that was a whole lot of fun. My gosh. Okay. So now we have some, some individuals preening. They're cleaning off their feathers. They're kind of and preening is kind of when they use their bills to rearrange those feathers, comb them through, Make sure they're all nice and organized. Oh, wow. Y'all have so many questions. I love it. Now, I want to zoom in on Jessica over here because she was going to talk to us a little bit more about these feathers. Whoa, too much zoom in here. Let me zoom back. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Jessica. So you can see all the feathers. They're not like stuck together. All the, um, they're not stuck together like other sure. feathers you find. Yeah. So they have little individual feathers on each one. So you can kind of see down here, you can see really the, little, zoom in. the little tufts kind on of like, each almost like individual. Those barbs. Yeah. yeah. So they're not like zippered together like say a typical flighted bird's feathers would be. 
because obviously they're not going to be getting off the ground with their huge, huge size. <laughs> so this is kind of like an outer feather that would be on the outside. Sure. And then these ones are some of the ones that are on the inside and they're a lot fluffier to help keep their, them insulated and warm or insulated and cool um, away from that sun in the hot savanna. Wow, that is so, so that's fascinating. You can really see the... All those different patterns, textures too. What a neat thing. Now, another thing to note too, that makes ostriches a bit different than other birds. Other birds that are flighted have very hollow bones. They gotta stay light and trim so that way they can get off the ground with a little effort and fly. Ostriches are different. They have solid bones. They're much heavier because they are much more adapted for running fast. In fact, let's go ahead and kind of turn over. Let's take another look at those big, huge legs. Maximum speed for an ostrich is about 50 miles per hour. So you can see those muscly legs. Somebody's peeking their head right on out though, grabbing those soybeans. <laughs> Elena, age 10, what is their status out in the wild? Thankfully, the uh, ostriches that we have here actually have a very stable population out in the wilds of Africa. Um, I believe they're actually considered least concern, um, which is such a good point to bring up because tomorrow is actually Endangered Species Day, which is specifically why we didn't talk about ostriches tomorrow. And instead, we're going to be talking about one of our critically endangered species here at Riverbanks tomorrow. Oh, somebody has a really messy bill. Oh, of course, you're going to get nice and close to the camera. <laughs> I will tell you all, Jessica pointed this out to me, but some of our equipment has a very bright, shiny gold piece on the other end, and the ostriches are very interested in it this morning. Oh, Heidi, what a unique question. Are they cold-blooded or warm-blooded? They are warm-blooded, so they would be endothermic, which means that they keep their own body temperature just like other mammals do, um, or like we do, for example. All of you who've been asking about the zebras, though, who strolled on over here? This is Gus. Gus decided to kind of join us. He's right behind our ostrich neck, hanging out, grabbing some hay quick. Hey, alfalfa, what are we eating? Hay, yep. Hay. Timothy hay. Delicious Timothy hay. Well, if you're a zebra, at least. <laughs> so yeah, the zebras are not a fan of the water, so that's why he decided to come over after we turned off the hose. Ah, that makes perfect sense. So we have some water babies that like to hang out in the sprinklers, cool off a little bit, and the zebras much prefer just to do exclusive dust baths then. So if you ever catch our zebras or ostriches kind of rolling around in the dirt, now you know what that means. But thank you all so much for sending in all these great questions. It's so great to see all of you tuning in live for us um, here, here at Z Learning. I want another quick reminder, tomorrow we're gonna be hanging out with our gorilla troop to celebrate and honor Endangered Species Day. Gorillas are a critically endangered species, so we have lots to talk about, and we're gonna have a bit of a play session with our youngest gorillas. Keep all those great questions coming in. I'm trying to scroll through and find the ones that stand out to me, but we do have other team members, a part of our communications team. Big shout out to Jordan and Sam who are working remotely from right here. They're not joining us behind the scenes. Instead, they are diligently answering all those questions and saying good morning to you all and welcoming you to Z Learning. Now, even though we have the rest of this week all planned out for Z Learning, we already have our plan set for next week too. We're working on confirming all those different times, what we're gonna talk about, what's gonna be the focus. So hopefully you all continue to tune in with us for Z Learning because we will have a whole nother week next week for you all to join us at 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. I'm going to go ahead and turn around this camera though real quick and say thank you so much to Jessica. We couldn't have done it without you, Jessica. We really appreciate it. You knew all about the ostriches and you knew how, just how they wanted to have their bath this morning. Now, thank you all so much for tuning in live for Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo and I hope... You join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. too, because we're going to be hanging out with that gorilla troop, just like I said, for Endangered Species Day. In the meantime, though, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on Friday morning.